Good evening, everybody. It's Mr. Shipman here, head teacher at Sheffield Springs Academy. Uh, thank you for joining me this evening uh, as I hope to provide you with an update on uh, the important work uh, we're doing around transition. Um, it's very different doing it this way, um, sat at home, and I had want to uh, meet you all in school in person. But unfortunately, um, the current circumstances uh, don't allow. So I hope tonight that I'll be able to provide you with a useful insight and um, make sure that I answer any of your questions. Just so you know how it, how this works, and we've we've done this before with parents at um, uh, with it within our school currently. Um, so we're getting a bit more experienced with this. In the background, uh, we've got Mr. Dixon and Miss Cartledge. Uh, Mr. Dixon's going to be running through the uh, slides for me. Um, so if you hear me asking uh, somebody to move on, it's Mr. Dixon in the background moving the slides on. And Miss Cartledge is going to be collating questions that you ask and um, will then ask them to me at the end of this presentation. So um, you, you should hopefully see a text box on your screen that enables you to ask any questions that you'd like me to answer. Obviously, we're in very strange times at the moment, so I'll do my utmost to answer your questions. And um, if for any reason I can't, um, then I'll be uh, thoroughly open and honest about that. And I will make sure that I go away and find the answer for you. What we will do within the next week or so is publish all the questions that were asked and make sure that you have an answer for them and then we'll place them on the website. Uh, so thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful evening and I, I don't want to keep you too long um, on such a nice night. Uh, but as I say, it's really important that we uh, that we do talk to you and, and talk you through the transition process. Thank you, Simon. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to um, all parents and carers and pupils. Um, I actually think the uh, choice of uh, secondary school is probably one of the most important decisions that you will make. And I've had a lot of conversations with parents over the last year around Springs. I know I've shown many people around as well. Um, and I know people have been around during the school day or came to our community today. And for you to put your trust in us and um, uh, trusting us educating your child that means a lot it means a lot to me personally and it means a lot to the staff at springs and we just hope that um, we do everything we can to make you and your children feel supported and that they enjoy their secondary education because that's 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 really important uh, to us i want to thank you for choosing us um, we have seen a really popular demand for springs this year in fact over the last two to three years uh, the school is now fully subscribed and um, in fact this week um, i agreed to uh, take on another 10 pupils um, so we've now gone actually over our, our admission number and that shows the strength of support that's out there in the community Obviously, um, we're very proud of our achievements at Sheffield Springs and those achievements have built, been built on one thing and one thing only. And that is everything we do, we put our pupils first. Any decision that we make is based on what's best for the pupils. And um, I hope that you'll see that as we move forward with your child's education. Next slide, please. So. Uh, I think I shared this actually with parents and carers um, in September, um, but I've tried to capture probably how you and your children are feeling at the moment. There's a lot of different feelings out there. I think the current situation as well is adding to that. And um, normally we have our three week early riser programme um, that is renowned throughout the city um, and actually nationally now as being really good practice. And I'm absolutely gutted that we can't run that programme. Um, but what I will say is the transition team headed by Mr Howard have produced a, a wonderful programme that will take place um, remotely. And we'll talk you through that this evening and look at how you can uh, get, get involved 
and get to know the school and the teachers there. Um, there's a picture of my daughter in the middle. <laughs> As you can see, she's not getting ready to go into year seven, um, but she was getting ready to start into year three. And um, for me, it, I was incredibly nervous with her going into year three. So I can't even begin to imagine how nervous parents feel when their children move on up into year seven. And you'll see there's a mixture of emotions there, whether that's um, some pupils who are really excited, maybe have um, outgrown primary a little bit, wanting a new challenge, looking forward to meeting new friends. Uh, on the other side of that spectrum, there's pupils who will be really, really worried, who will be really anxious and um, scared about um, what's what's coming their way. And I, and I hope tonight allay some of those fears a little bit. I think it's also safe to say as parents, we also have those same anxieties or uh, same bits of excitement as well. If you look at the top, I've, I've tried to sum up the things that, that we believe in as a school. First and foremost, I want your children to be happy at Springs. I think that's really important. If somebody's happy in school, they'll, they'll do well, they'll really flourish. I also want them to feel safe. And uh, within the academy, we obviously do a lot of work around making sure um, pupils are safe. We want them to make outstanding progress with learning. Of course we do. That's the main uh, thing for any school that, that pupils do well with the learning. And finally, I'd like pupils to develop a passion for something, something that will continue when they leave Springs and continue throughout their lifetime. Maybe that's playing a musical instrument, uh, playing a particular sport, a love for reading, anything like that, that that pupils are passionate about. And if they leave us with a passion, doing well, uh, been happy throughout the five years and feel safe, then I think we will have done a good job and, and you'll hopefully commend us for that. Thank you, Simon. I think the important thing with any school is that triangle of support and I refer to this quite a bit. Um, obviously as a school we're there to support the, the student and it's really important that we do but we cannot provide the best support without uh, support from parents as well and carers uh, and all three uh, need to be in line together. So uh, obviously the students have a role to play in making sure that uh, they follow the school expectations and work with us and and, and go that extra mile in uh, different extracurricular activities, etc. Uh, but it's also important that as parents and carers, you support us as much as you can. Um, attend parents evenings, attend performances, sports matches if you can. Um, I know sometimes that can be difficult with with work, etc. But but I think it's really important. And, and the other thing that I want to mention tonight is that as a school, we will not always get everything right. And I think I've said this to parents before, uh, we're a large institution, we do make mistakes. And uh, if we do make a mistake, we'll hold a hand up. We won't try and hide it. Um, we won't try and deflect attention elsewhere. We'll admit to you that we made a mistake and hopefully we can work together uh, to move on. And I think that approach has um, really resonated with, with parents and, and they've supported us uh, with that approach. Uh, we all make mistakes, um, but underlying all of that is the fact that we've got the child's best interests at heart. Thank you. So tonight we're going to give you an update on the current situation at Sheffield Springs Academy because it is for obvious reasons uh, very, very different to anything we've been through before. We'll provide clarity on the transition programme and what that looks like. We'll talk you through our plan for September um, and then at the end I'll give you an opportunity uh, to ask questions. Um, if we're going through this presentation and something pops in your mind a question that you'd like to ask if you just if you just type it down then miss cartledge will be receiving those questions uh and, and we'll ask those uh, at the end thanks <coughs> so <clears throat> in terms of the current situation we've been closed to pupils and staff since the 20th of march uh, that was a a really uh, sad day um uh, it's uh, the longest period in 20 years of teaching that I've been out of school. One thing that you want as a teacher, a member of staff who works in school and particularly as a head teacher is to hear your school full of 
uh, noises and pupils um, walking around the building. Um, and it's, it's very sad to see it, it quiet. It was understandable, obviously, why we why we shut and it was important to follow that government guidance. Since then, we've been open uh, for pupils of, of key workers or those classed as vulnerable. Initially, uh, we pulled our resources together and worked with Sheffield Park Academy. Um, but si since Springbank, um, we've been working from uh, Sheffield Springs and, and uh, uh, that's been really positive. In terms of pupils, they've been working online with uh, an application called Microsoft Teams. Uh, and so basically how that works is uh, obviously tonight we're conducting um, this presentation through there, but pupils get work that's uploaded for them. Uh, they log on to the computer and um, they complete the work and send it back to their teacher who gives them feedback. One thing that we, we have been um, concerned about is that not everybody has access to uh, uh, computers etc or they might be accessing it on a, a, a phone device which might take up more data etc and um, so we, we've also been issuing paperwork packs as well and we've been issuing those on a on a weekly or as of need basis and um, I think the other thing as well is that we've um, either purchased ourselves uh, because I think that's really important or um, been allocated through the Department for Education a number of Chromebooks uh, which um, I've taken out into the community. Um, I'm out again on my rounds tomorrow so I might see a few of you um, but we've we've basically um, uh, been delivering those Chromebooks out out to those pupils um, where, where there's a, a need that's been indicated. Um, it's been really nice to to go out and I, I personally wanted to do it uh, because I've wanted to meet parents and pupils. Um, I think I've delivered close to 100 now. Um, uh, I think I've put in for another 300, uh, which means I could be doing this uh, service for uh, a while yet. So we'll we'll have to have to see. Um, obviously, challenges like that will work uh, with, with yourselves on. Um, at this moment in time, I, I don't think we'll be able to provide a Chromebook to year six pupils. Um, but if this goes on into September, then then that will will be the case that we, we will look at that. Um, we really promote something called education with character. And I'm a really big uh, believer in this. Uh, particularly with a, a PE teaching background. Um, obviously what goes on in the classroom is extremely important um, and pupils are in school to uh, make progress with their with their learning ultimately and, and do well and go on and have a, a great career doing it whatever it is they want to choose. Um, with, with education with character it's, it's something a little bit different. It's the experiences that take place outside of the classroom and I think that's really important uh, because that can really help um, uh, pupils develop inside the classroom as well. Um, we have a, a lot of resources on our doorstep, whether that's in Sheffield or further afar, uh, that pupils can use and utilise with their teachers um, to ensure that they develop a, uh, some cultural capital and find out more about the place that they live, both locally, nationally and on an international stage. Um, so we have a number of challenges, whether that's through the arts or sport, um, and, and I would ask every pupil in year six to get involved in those. I think that's really, uh, really important. And when we finish school at three o'clock, um, actually moving forward to uh, four o'clock, there's an hour there that we, we, we do encourage pupils to stay behind and, and do that. Uh, from personal experience, um, it's the reason why I became a teacher, because uh, my PE teacher used to spend a, a lot of time with me out of school um, in the evenings and weekends. And uh, it gives you a, an opportunity to build relationships up with people you might not normally do. And school's definitely a lot easier when uh, you've got those uh, challenges, but also passions to follow as well. Um, we're really big on keeping parents up to date with everything that's going on. If you uh, go onto our website, um, we produce a newsletter each week that we share with parents and, and pupils. Um, that celebrates the good things that are happening at Springs. 
those newsletters are absolutely packed as well since lockdown. There's a lot of great stuff going on uh, but within the home for young people and we like to celebrate that as much as we can. We have a, a really good Twitter account where we'll tweet out messages to you um, and celebrate pupils achievements and, and please make sure you, you visit the website for regular updates. We've done quite a bit of work on the website recently and there's a, a transition uh, banner on the top of the website that will keep you informed with everything that you need and I'd ask you to look on there um, you know quite frequently and throughout the summer as well because we'll put on key messages for you. Um, year 10 pupils returned to us last Monday. Um, you may be aware that the government asked that those pupils received some face-to-face -face contact before the summer. Uh, those pupils are coming in uh, now uh, on a Monday to Thursday uh, and all the other pupils are, are remaining from home. Um, I will discuss the implications of, of, of kind of September uh, very shortly. Thank you. So in terms of transition, it's going to be more web based this year. Um, it, it has to be because unfortunately um, uh, we are we are struggling to get pupils into school. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say we won't have them in school though. I think we just need to think very carefully about how it could work. Uh, maybe uh, there'll be a short period of time, an hour or so where we could get pupils in to look around the building. But uh, before we um, uh, agree to anything like that, it, it, you know, first and foremost, it's important that pupils and staff can do that safely. So I just ask you to, to bear with us on that. Um, I've spoke about the, the green box at the top of um, the, the web page. It's divided into two parts, so it's pupils and uh, parents. So if you look at the, the parents section, um, it, so you click on the green banner, go to the parents section and there's a video to welcome you from the transition team. There's also on there the year seven in bu uh, induction booklet and that co covers everything that you might want to know around the school day. Uh, term dates. Uh, I think there was a question about term dates earlier. If you, you go to the induction booklet, the term dates are, are on there. Uh, but just to to make you aware that our first day back in school is Thursday, the third of September. Now, if we are unable to get pupils in for the uh, before the summer, we are possibly looking at maybe year six is starting on the 2nd of September, which is a Wednesday. But I will ensure that you get that information um, well in advance. So before we break up in the summer, um, there's information on there about uniform, uh, what equipment pupils will need, attendance, and the, obviously the importance of attendance and doing well at school is, is key. Homework, and uh, education with character that I've, I've spoke to you about. We have a terrific rewards program and you'll be able to see in the student booklet a pupil wearing the, um, the badges that you can get for a whole host of things, whether that's subject based or education with character based or attendance based. Um, we also uh, have a code of conduct summary on there. Uh, as you would expect, we expect pupils to behave in a, a certain way. I think that's really important. Pupils come to learn and uh, we don't expect uh, any disruption to that learning. And if there is disruption to that learning, then we will uh, tackle that uh, in, a, in a way that's fitting of, of that behaviour. Um, there's the bullying policy in there. As I've said to people before, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say bullying doesn't take place in school uh, because I think I'd be lying. I think, you know, bullying is is a, an issue in uh, a lot of schools. What I will say we do is we deal with it very effectively. So instances of bullying are low, the number of times it happens, but actually when it does happen on that odd occasion, we deal with it very well. Uh, there's also information about school meals and the mobile phone policy. In, in regards to the mobile phone policy, um, it's uh, we ask that pupils don't bring mobile phones into school. A number of reasons really. The mobile technology can create us with a lot of issues. Um, I'm sure people are, are more than aware of, of the um, 
you know the issues that go on on mobile phones also if somebody loses an expensive piece of equipment as well it's um it's really hard to replace for, for parents and carers so we ask that pupils don't bring them in um, we do, however, understand that some parents might want pupils to bring them because they might need to contact them on the way to and from school. So if your child is bringing in a mobile phone, once they get to the gate, it needs to be switched off and it needs to be put away. If we see or hear a mobile phone, um, we take it till the end of the day uh, and then we uh, give it back to the pupil um, at the end of the day and basically that phone comes to my office and goes to um, uh, my PA Miss Wilson and she looks after that in a, a locked cupboard. Um, the, early, the pupil section goes live on the 29th of June until the 10th of July and basically there's a two week online curriculum covering 10 different uh, curriculum areas. So there's a lot of work that pupils can be doing in preparation to starting um, secondary school. And I would really urge you to um, encourage pupils uh, to, to log on to that and, and to complete the work because um, a lot of effort has gone into that programme from both year six teachers and also um, current staff within Sheffield Springs Academy. Thank you. So on there as well for pupils, there's a, a meet the teachers thing. Um, we've um, done um, a very good uh, bit emoji um, presentation and hopefully, um, you know, it's um, that has been designed with a bit of fun as well, created with a bit of fun by Mr Howard, but it's also about getting to know your school and getting to know your teachers. Uh, and it's 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 a lovely bit of work and hopefully pupils will be able to have a, a read of that as well as parents. Um, we want you to get to meet your form tutor. We've put a virtual tour on there and I, um, when, when it goes live on the 29th, I would urge you to look at that. So we've basically shown you around school uh, and shown you the key areas of school because we understand that the chances of coming in may be slim. So if you have a look on that virtual tour, um, you'll hopefully uh, become very familiar with, with the school very quickly. I also know that a lot of pupils who are joining us have probably been in the school before, whether that's with their brothers and sisters who attend Springs or through sports competitions, etc. But we thought it'd be useful to put that up there. We've also put a video on there from our student ambassadors. We're incredibly proud of our student ambassadors. Uh, they represent the school really, really well. Uh, we've got over 40 of them. Hopefully in uh, in a few years time, uh, pupils in this year group um, will be ambassadors as well. And they've sent you some messages on what you can expect from Springs. And I think if pupils are nervous and they've heard stories about uh, things that might happen to you when you go to secondary school for the first time, I would urge you to look at that video because our pupils have uh, done that themselves and, and presented in a, in a great way. Uh, there'll also be uh, other presentations on there that we, we've done for you around, uh, uh, specifically around school um, and uh, the key policies around teaching and behaviour uh, and what we do with education with character, etc. So, so have a look on those. And there'll also be a, a virtual spring and shine programme for uh, SEND pupils as well. And I think that's, that's really important um, that those pupils are also um, uh, supported to um, make sure that, that they feel ready for, for secondary school. So we've tweaked that uh, slightly uh, and Miss Benson and the uh, team um, within the bridge have done a great job and there'll be a package to support those pupils. Um, we're going to use our Microsoft Teams programme to deliver most of this. Um, there will be videos um, to help you um, log on um it's not complicated but if you're like me a bit of a technophobe and and you're not sure sometimes how things work uh, we felt that it'd be good to put a, a video on there um as well um and and i think that's important i've tested this out and it works for me so uh, there's a good chance it'll work for you if i can follow the instructions i promise you that um we also have walking bus information on there uh, and that, that basically talks about safe routes to school. So normally when we do the early risers programme, 
we we offer a walking bus service from our five main feeder primaries obviously we can't do that this year um, but we can put maps on there showing safe routes to school for pupils so uh, have a look at that i know the walking to and from school is always a, a, a big thing uh, for parents and carers when pupils start in secondary school you kind of you've walked your child to school um throughout primary and then it's that kind of letting them go to walk to school is you know is that what you're going to do you worry about them going to the shops and everything else um so that's there to support you at the same time if you still want to walk with your uh, child to school we welcome that as well uh, you'll find myself on the front gates every morning and other members of slt around uh, so we're happy to meet you and talk to you and address any concerns etc uh, i've got to say that morning duty for me is um, one of the best bits of the day uh, it's nice lovely to talk to parents and, and pupils as they're coming into school um, we have a parental consent book uh, booklet that's really important <clears throat> we need this information to, to ensure we've got all the contact information um, health information that we need etc on our system to, to support your child the best we can if you haven't returned this yet can I ask that you do so um, you can either post it back to school or you can take a picture of it and uh, email it uh, to uh, the transitions uh, email address um, if, you, if you're unsure of that if you go on the website uh, that web address is, is there for you um, the my ed app as well also allows you to keep in touch with us um, so we will issue a lot of messages on the my ed app uh, it tells you uh, even tells you a thing how you you know um, when your pupil arrives in school etc which is a lot of parents like so there's a lot of things on there that will help you uh, with your child starting hopefully what you can see is that communication is very important to us um, I, I think parents um, uh, obviously have concerns when pupils are coming up to a larger school with a thousand pupils but if we get the communication right and keep you informed um, then um, I, I hope you'll be you'll be happy with that and we can maintain a dialogue with you that which is positive and ultimately it means the pupil does well thank you <coughs> and this is what the my ed app looks like um, so you, you download it um, on, on your smartphone you can then enter in your school and it'll um, uh, it'll, it'll bring up all the key things for you you can view letters um, leaflets etc anything that kind of is important to school and how it's running uh, you'll be able to see it through that thanks Simon right September <laughs> this is uh, the tricky bit um, so we feel really well planned with the transition program etc um, with September I'm uh, a little bit more nervous because I'm, I'm still um, in the dark a little bit over um, this so we're currently unsure as to what September will, will look like you will have heard no doubt that um, uh, the government has made a commitment to all pupils coming back to school um, but we're still unsure of what that looks like and what guidance will be issued around that um, obviously as head teacher I need that information now basically um, but um, as soon as I uh, uh, get that guidance which I expect to be within uh, the next fortnight as soon as I get that guidance I'll be writing out to parents including year six parents telling telling you what our plans are and um, what I can say is that we are planning um, behind the scenes on a, a number of scenarios and um, a lot of that work will be void uh, following the guidance but I do think it's best to prepare as thoroughly as you can and and then obviously um, there should be less to do once the guidance is is issued uh, as I said I, I will write write to you all and I'll also hold another video meeting to present these plans and also give you a chance to ask any questions that you have uh, so that you feel fully informed and that you also can question and and challenge uh, what, what we're doing because I think that's really important as well and um, we will ensure a smooth and effective start to the year and um, what I can't do as I've 
just alluded to is give you specifics yet, but it will include a significant period of time with your child's form tutor. They'll get to know the building, the routines, break and lunches, etc., and, and how lessons work. We know really that's the bit that probably pupils worry about most. Um, so uh, we will make sure that they do get a, a time for that. The other thing I want to say is that we, we put together a very comprehensive risk assessment. Um, it includes how pupils and staff travel to and from our school and also uh, and when they how they behave in school as well. It's really thorough. It's reviewed weekly by SLT and if any changes are, are made, uh, then we disseminate that out to the, the staff and pupils. Uh, the reason I put that on is I want you to be very clear that, that we've taken this situation incredibly seriously. We've followed guidance throughout and um, as head teacher, I have the welfare of, of pupils and, and staff to look after. And, and that's a really serious part of, of my job and it uh, probably actually the most important part of my job. And um, uh, as I said earlier, um, you know, it's important that pupils feel happy and safe and that goes a long way to it. So when whatever the return does look like, I want you to be assured that we will um, have taken every measure possible um, to keep pupils and staff safe. Thank you. OK, uh, just a, a final few things uh, from me. I've spoke about education with character. Um, it's really important. It, it, it's about uh, building a pupil up more than just what goes on in the classroom. We have something called the Springs Challenge and the Springs Promise and uh, you can uh, pupils will be able to log on and uh, have a pupil passport. Uh, they'll do that in school in their tutor times probably and they'll be able to keep a record of everything that they've done uh, throughout the time with us and then they'll be able to take that on to college etc and you can put a lot a, a lot of things on there of experiences photographs etc which is really good i think as well we want to develop that character in pupils that compassion um, we try and do a lot of work out in the community as well um, and and support our community it's really important to me that the schools at the heart of our community. I'm really proud of the community that we serve and, and how we support them and it means a lot to me. Um, uh, and um, I, I want pupils to be passionate about the area that they live in and, uh, and hopefully working in the future as well. And, and also that kind of commitment for service to help people to look after others, whether that's um, making your mum a cup of tea at home or whether that's looking after an elderly relative in the community or, or things like that. I think that um, that that service is a, is a good thing. We have three values and I'll, I'll just talk you through these briefly. So the fir first value is excellence. So that's around a determination and enthusiasm to be the best you can. These values apply to staff and pupils. Normally in schools you see values, but they don't kind of triangulate to anything. We try and live these three values throughout everything we do in school. Um, so excellence is the first one. The next one is pride. And I've been talking about pride earlier and, and we're proud of ourselves at Springs. Um, I think uh, probably the, the best thing uh, for me at Springs was uh, just over a year ago now when the school received its first ever good Ofsted judgment. I, I was proud of our pupils, our staff and the way in which uh, we'd worked together over a number of years. Um, and it shows the uh, improvements that we've made to the school. And, you know, that's there for all to see. And ultimately, who benefits? It's the pupils because they're getting a good education. Um, that's not to say that we haven't got things to improve on as a school, but we're, we're proud of our school. We're, we're proud of our community. Um, I've absolutely loved this last seven days, getting out and driving around and, and dropping Chromebooks off and just just having conversations with, with people, having a bit of a laugh with them as well, and just generally checking people are OK. Um, it's unfortunate that I can't visit all 
uh, 1,000 pupils, but um, I don't think I've, I've actually had the time to see everybody, but it's it, it's been good and um, I think it's important that we do that. And finally, uh, ambition. Um, I want pupils to come to school and seek opportunity, try different things, imagine things that they could be doing in the future and not thinking they can't and not putting barriers up and and having a goal and, and going for it and making those dreams that they have really real. And if they have those dreams, no matter how big or how small, uh, I can promise you we'll support pupils with that. And we've got a wealth of knowledge uh, on the staff body that will really help pupils. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that I would say about Springs is that we are a very caring and supportive uh, community. And um, I'm, I'm really happy that it's made the improvements it's had uh, recently. And I'm really happy that so many parents have put our trust in us for the last two years. Um, and we won't let you down and uh, we'll do our very best for your child. Uh, I promise you that. And on that note, I think we're now going over to questions. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, um, there are a lot of questions about the date. Can you confirm, please, the official start date for Year 7? Yeah, so um, I think I, uh, yeah, I can. So the official start date for everybody is Thursday, the 3rd of September. And what we need to do is just um, wait and see um, what the guidance comes out from the government first. Uh, if that gives us an opportunity to get a few pupils into school, then we might start on that day. But if need be, we would look to start year sevens a day earlier. Uh, so that means they have the building to themselves and that would be on Wednesday, the 2nd of September. But I will let all parents know um, prior to the summer holidays. As soon we we're kind of looking at that at the moment, so I don't I don't want to say it's going to be next week, but actually it could be next week when I let you know. But the very latest will be um, the summer holidays. Uh, thank you. Also, um, parents have been reading articles in the press about schools not having uh, blazers and ties from September due <coughs> to the current pandemic. Um, could you talk a little bit more about uniform and what the expectation yeah. will be? Absolutely. Um, so currently for a key worker and uh, vulnerable pupil school and uh, year 10 pupils, uh, we don't expect them to wear any uniform. Um, the reason for that is we uh, obviously want pupils to feel comfortable in school, but we also need to be reasonable that uh, pupils need to be able to clean the clothes easily, etc. before coming back to school. Uh, and obviously, um, Sometimes blazers can't be machine washable, etc. So we've we've relaxed the stance on uniform until the summer. Um, we need to look at what it looks like when we get back in September. But I would envisage that when we return in September, um, however that looks, that pupils will be asked to go back to wearing school uniform. There may be some tweaks for that. Um, so, for instance, we might not ask pupils to wear a tie. Um, but we'll be uh, very clear with you on what the expectation is and we'll be very clear with you before the summer uh, in line with information around start dates as well. Thank you. Um, lots of questions about the MS Teams, um, the two week online curriculum. So this is a bit of a two parter. OK. Uh, this question that's coming up is how and when will parents receive their logins and the second question is if a year six child is currently attending primary school can they complete that work outside school hours or, or will it be live live teaching oh good and um, there's there's basically there's going to be a mixture so year six teachers have worked with us to plan the work and i know some year six pupils have been put into bubbles based on the secondary school that they're att attending. So, for example, there might be 10 pupils who are coming up to Springs um, and they're all in a class together and there might be 10 pupils who are going to park, etc. And I know that the teachers in year six want to do some work with them around that curriculum. So there'll be definitely some work going on 
um, in um, the classroom based on the work that's on Microsoft Teams. I very much, I don't think they'll be logging on whilst at primary. I think um, staff, year six staff will have access to the resources. Um, Mr. Howard's sending those over and then staff will print those off and work with pupils through that. But you can log on to Microsoft Teams at night uh, to complete work as well if you want or um, in afternoon, etc. There'll be plenty of things for you to do on there. Um, they'll also you'll get your login details um, this week. Um, uh, so uh, hopefully by the end of the week, certainly by Monday, you should have um, login details uh, for Microsoft Teams. Um, if you are struggling with that, um, then just contact us at school, uh, either use the transition email or, or phone school and we'll be uh, there to support you. Um, I think that that work transition work is really important. Obviously, pupils are out of practice at the moment and um, had a, a lot of time, long time at home. And whilst whilst that's good, um, I can speak from my own experience that it's challenging trying to educate your, your child. Um, but uh, hopefully the work that we're setting within school will be consolidating work that's gone on in year set six, but also challenging them for more uh, difficult things that, that lay ahead. OK, thank you. Um, how are tutor groups going to be allocated? Will children be placed in a tutor group with a friend from their primary? OK, yeah, uh, this is a, uh, a question that we do get asked every year and understandably so because pupils are coming in some cases from really small primary schools and going up to a large secondary school. We, we do try wherever possible to allocate pupils into a tutor group with somebody that they'll know. Um, that doesn't work out all of the time. So so we do set our pupils uh, based on what they've been doing in their uh, academic studies. Um, I, I can see on my screen somebody's obviously put that there's been no SAT test this year. So um, what we do need and, and what we are getting and have got really is, is teacher assessments. So we'll 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 use those as a basis, but then we'll come back to it uh, next term. Uh, to look at whether that has given us the accurate setting that we need. Um, normally this isn't an issue because early risers means that pupils, I always set pupils a, a challenge at the start of early risers and making five new friends by the end of the three weeks. But obviously we can't do that. Um, but pupils do make friends very, very quickly. Um, we, we consult with primary teachers as well around friendship groups that are really positive or maybe some that aren't and, and how we best um, set pupils, but it's mainly done by um, obviously uh, what they're doing in in the classroom because we have to tailor our learning um, to making sure every pupil gets the best deal in the lessons. OK, um, uh, there was a question about lockers. Will Year 7s be allocated lockers? OK, um, no is the answer to that. Um, what we, uh, the reason why is um, now we've got um, a lot more pupils in school, we don't have in, enough lockers and um, we're in the process of uh, slowly but surely taking those out. Um, it's, a, it's a mixture for me with regards lockers because I do think that they're, they're incredibly useful, um, but uh, they also have in the past caused us a few problems as well um, but because school is growing we also need that space for pupils to sit at break and lunches etc uh, so i can't i can't promise sit here and promise people a locker what i would say if somebody had a burning desire to have a locker and they felt it would help them in terms of um joining our school i wouldn't rule it out and um we we could uh, uh support that but I, I can't say to every pupil in school that they'll get a locker because simply we, ha we haven't got enough since schools become as uh, popular as it has. OK, um, there was a question about the My Ed app that you spoke about earlier. How do parents uh, get a login for My Ed? What should they do? Uh, wow, this one has stumped me being the technophobe that I am earlier. Um, so you download, I believe you download the app. Uh, I'm looking at Simon and he's nodding to me in the in the background, but he can't say it. Can you come on, Simon, and explain? Thanks, Mr. Shipman. Um, 
So yes, the parents can easily download the the app. Um, there's plenty of leaflets and um, online information on the website. Um, so yeah, it's a fairly straightforward um, app, whether it's down via the um, the Apple iOS um, store or via the Google and Android store. Um, and as I said, the um, the, app, the the details on that is all sent out. I think in the in the initial packs, which is done uh, via the admin admin staff. Um, so it's fairly straightforward um, to log in and, and download. Okay, thank you. And as we speak, just to uh, as I said to you all earlier, um, my IT skills are somewhat left to be desired. Um, I've got lots of staff who've obviously logged into this presentation as well, texting me, telling me how to log into the Myod app. So um, uh, hopefully Mr. Dixon's cleared it up there and um, uh, these instructions are on the uh, website as well. Once you've got the Myod app up and you've downloaded it, if you put in Sheffield Springs, uh, you'll see it come up and you can you can connect from there. OK, um, just a couple more questions. There was um, a question around, I think you've already covered this, but if you could just clarify, parents wondering whether there will be any opportunity for children to meet their new teachers before school starts. So will there be any face to face time before their official start date? Yeah, what we're hoping to do with that is is look at doing that uh, remotely and online a bit a bit in, in this kind of forum. But it'd be good for tutors to meet with parents and, and pupils as well um, and, and doing it this way. Um, I, I hope you understand that you know, I'm not for one minute trying to be awkward. It actually breaks my heart that school has to operate in this way. Um, but we have to be careful introducing certain groups of pupils in school um, obviously there, there are strict guidance in place for primary schools and bubbles can't mix within uh, primary schools uh, with secondary schools we've got separate groups of pupils as well that, that uh, the primary pupils cannot come into contact with uh, we're trying our best to, to, to make it, it work and, and look at how we can get pupils into school um, but um, I would envisage that happening uh, a bit like this through teams where the tutor can sit down and, and go through with pupils and parents um, about next year and give you an opportunity to ask any questions one on one. Um, just going back to the previous question as well, um, that the uh, Myed instructions were sent out in the in the pack that parents received um, uh, a few weeks ago, so um, you, you can get that as well. Okay, thank you. And then last question is just around a parent who's just inquiring what happens about uh, dietary requirements and, and allergies at lunchtime. Okay, um, I've got to say, and I, I'm saying this as somebody who uh, eats in there every day, um, our catering team are fabulous. Um, the range of meals that are, that are there at Springs um, is, is great. Um, only today I've had a fabulous spaghetti bolognese. Um, but um, on all seriousness as well, we do um, work very closely with parents and carers around making sure that um, pupils uh, get the food that they need and, and don't get the food that, that perhaps um, may cause issues for them. Um, our, our school nurse will look at that as well. Um, that's really important that the contact information comes back to us um, because we uh, can look at those allergies and look at what we do to uh, support in school um, on the data form there's a specific uh, section around dietary requirements and um, I ask that you fill that in if you've returned the form and you've, you've for, for some reason not managed to fill that in I ask that you get in touch with the uh, transitions team through the email address uh, we've got a number of pupils in school who've got allergies and um, they've got a very good relationship with the, uh, as I say, the, the nurse in school um, and um, the, with the canteen team as well. Um, uh, and as I say, that's something that we, we'd follow through really um, stringently with you and your child. Thank you so much. There are no more questions. OK, that's it. So um, look, I hope tonight's been useful to everybody. Um, uh, 
oh, there's another question come up. Um, will they continue with primary throughout those two weeks? So I think um, that's again a similar question. If a student is attending primary, which takes precedence, I guess. Yeah, so you just need to continue uh, with primary school at the moment. That's where uh, pupils are. They'll get the learning through there. That will be a mixture of from primary and, and, and springs as well. Um, hopefully that's that's answered that question. Um, I hope people have found it useful. Um, it's a very, uh, a very challenging time uh, that we're in. Um, I'm happy as well to obviously take any questions from uh, parents if you if you have any further down the line. We've also got a great transitions team as well. So there's plenty of staff that you can contact with. And I think that's a big thing for parents when you used to go into primary schools, maybe dropping your children off and having a conversation with the teacher. It's a little bit more difficult in a secondary school. Uh, which is why hopefully me reassuring you around the importance of communication um, will reassure you that, that we do a pretty good job of, of communicating with parents and, and keeping you in the loop. As I said, we will make mistakes along the way. I'm not going to sit here and say we're perfect. We're far from it. But um, whatever we do, it's just within the child's best interests and, and that's the biggest reassurance I can give you as, as head teacher. So uh, thank you for all um, giving up a lovely evening um, to uh, listen to me talk about springs for 40 minutes. Um, I hope I've answered all, all your questions, although I need to brush up on my uh, my ed knowledge. So I apologise about that and uh, thank Mr Dixon for getting me out of all there. Um, I, but also um, we look forward to meeting you all uh, shortly. As soon as I have any information about our return for September, um, I will write to you all and do another e event like this. Um, please make sure you're on the website looking at all the transition information uh, and everything that goes on uh, on there. If you have any uh, troubles with the internet, etc., and it's, you need any advice, if you just just let let us know at school. We're, we're here to support you and. Uh, uh, we'll do whatever we can to try and, and help you. Thank you very much.